Hello everyone, it's time for another lens review. Today we're going to talk about the TTR Artisan 50mm f2.0 lens that covers a full frame sensor. This lens is really tiny, yet the build quality is superb. It's pulled full in metal and it weighs around 200 grams. It has click stops that goes from f2 all the way up to f16 and it has 10 aperture blades. The filter size on this lens is 43mm and it has a screw-on lens cap. It natively fits most of the mirrorless cameras that are on the market today without any adapters. And that is also the main advantage with this, because without the adapter, this lens gets really really tiny on the camera. And that is one of the main advantages of it. It's the size, especially when it compared it to Vintage lenses, they tend to pull out quite a lot, even if they are the same size, but the adapter adds quite a lot of size. The price for this lens is around $100. And you have to keep that in mind when you're looking on the image quality. You have to look on value versus the price. And I think this lens holds a really high value, even if there is some flaws with the image quality. Those flaws are mainly two of which is that it's not really sharp out in the very far edges and it never really gets sharp even if you stop it down. Kind of gets sharpness when you come down to f11, f16 but at that small of an aperture you're also losing overall sharpness due to diffraction so it doesn't really work that well and it has quite a lot of vignetting. But the thing is when you're looking on these things in control environment, it's one thing. And when you're using it to be reality, these things doesn't really matter. Because first of all, I almost never put my subjects in very ed edge. And those areas are anyway, most of the time out of focus anyway, because the focus is on my subject. So practicality, it doesn't really matter that much. I would however not say that this is the lens that you should bring if you're planning to perhaps shoot uh, nature stuff and traditional landscapes where you want perfect sharpness all the way out to the edges. However, if you're planning to shoot a lot of humans and you, if you want a lot small lens that are really easy to just bring with you and compacts down your over, the overall size of your camera, this is a really nice lens. Besides those performance issues, it performs good it has nice sharpness in the middle, it renders nice colors, it's nice to work with and the overall feeling of the lens is really good. So I think it's worth those flaws or those characters that the lens has. Because if this was a vintage lens that were very popular, we would talk probably talk about it slightly differently. Maybe saying it has a lot of character, it has a certain look on the sides. Well, it has. And I think when you're starting to use this lens and actually put it out in real world situations, the thing is that that vignetting doesn't really bother me. I quite often adding vignetting to my images anyway, and the lack of sharpness in the edges, well, th this is not for making landscapes, that's for sure. This is for, I would say, shooting people and stuff like that. And in those situations, it's brilliantly good. I can't really complain about it, especially not considering the price. It doesn't have any issues with purple fringing and stuff like that. Not that are worth mentioning. In some situations, that things occur, but not in a way where I think it's worth mentioning. It's not that bad, or it's not bad at all. It's really good, I suppose we should say. What about the focal length? 50 millimeter, well, 50 millimeter for me, it's the one that I use most. It's the most used focal range and it's extremely versatile. It's not too tight, it's not too wide, and it works for almost everything. Most of the pictures that I do is made with a 50 millimeter lens and it's extremely versatile. You can't really go wrong with a 50 millimeter. So the question is, is it worth buying and what is the actual options? Well, when it comes to tiny 50 millimeter lenses, there isn't that many options, especially not for this price. So I, I would say the nearest option is vintage lenses. But then again, if you're gonna have a vintage lenses, you need to add that adapter and that builds out the size, which makes the vintage lenses overall bigger, even if it's the same size from the beginning. 
If you like this kind of content and you want to see more photo related stuffs, click here to see a full playlist and click here to subscribe. I release a video once a week. So if you want to see all of those videos, click on that bell icon so you get the notifications as well. Thanks for watching and I see you later.